Intensive care patients require emergency treatment, which often needs to be administered in environments where there's high risk of infection. We speak to the experts in Estellas to find out what's behind these life-saving treatments. Estellas is a top 20 pharmaceutical company. It's a global organisation. We employ about 15,000 people throughout the world. We as an organisation are really committed to developing innovative, differentiated medicines for people around the world that really make a difference in their lives. So our commitment is to develop best-in-class therapies for patients who've got needs that really need great medicines to help them through. In the world of intensive care, Estellas' focus is on providing patients who've got an organ transplantation with uh, therapies for anti-rejection. Going forward, we've also got global and localised research and development programmes focused on patients with serious fungal and bacterial infections who may be undergoing a life-threatening situation. So that's really our focus in terms of intensive care. Going forward, our programmes are really uh, under the banner of Changing Tomorrow. And Changing Tomorrow is about exploring uh, other therapeutic areas where patients have a huge need, the families may have a huge need as well. And our role is to, again, focus our research and development programmes to help find therapies that will really help these patients get a lot better. Research and development is uh, a core uh, area for us because that's the lifeblood from which new medicines flow. So uh, acquiring and working with companies in uh, areas like biotech uh, are quite uh, important for us as an organisation because they have the innovation, they have the capacity uh, to really understand some of these areas in depth. And so we're doing a lot more partnering, working with biotech companies and smaller uh, academic type organisations really to understand these diseases better uh, to help us develop better medicines for these patients. We as an organisation can never forget that patients are at the centre of everything we do. Uh, patients define the kind of research and development that we do. Uh, patients help us understand some of the problems that with the diseases and the therapies that they may need and that helps inform everything that we do from uh, the production facility in terms of how medicines are packaged right through to uh, how we may want to give some of these uh, information about uh, medicines to our doctors as well. So patients are at absolute central point of everything we do as an organisation. So how exactly does the medicine end up on our shelf? We now speak to Dr Collins about this complicated process. The discovery and development of a new drug is a very complicated, lengthy and highly regulated process. It can often take uh, in excess of a decade before you go from the uh, molecules that are initially developed into a drug that's actually licensed for use in patients. If you take a, a typical kind of situation, uh, the basic research might begin uh, looking into the bacteria that cause serious infections in critically unwell patients. Now, the researchers and scientists might discover a potential weakness in the bacteria that causes these infections. The research and development would then begin to look into drugs or molecules that are able to exploit that weakness to develop a new antibiotic. Now, that uh, process, as I said, might take um, quite a, a period of time, and there may be hundreds and thousands of po possible molecules that are developed um, but only one or two of those might actually proceed uh, for further testing and development. The next stage in the development process is that the compounds that have been uh, uh, forwarded in the uh, development process are tested um, in healthy volunteers. If there are no safety concerns, then the drug would go forward into tests on actual patients who uh, might be quite unwell and have uh, these serious infections and could possibly benefit from the new antibiotic. What then happens is that the, uh, the drug would go through a, a number of these trials in order to prove the effectiveness and safety of the drug across a number of different uh, populations and patient types. It's very important to uh, bear in mind the high dropout rate of such medicines throughout the whole re research and development process. A generally accepted figure is that only 
one in 10,000 molecules will actually go from the development uh, process beginning in the lab and actually become a medicine that is uh, used for patients who are unwell. The process can take upwards of 10 to 12 years and is also very expensive, typically costing in excess of 800 million pounds. The question then becomes, what goes into maintaining the safety of a medicine? And the question is, it's everyone's responsibility. There are rigorous quality standards for every step of the process, from the manufacturing site all the way through to the pharmacy. In the medical department, we collect and collate all adverse event reports from clinical trials, or we often receive telephone calls from healthcare professionals and patients themselves. We then enter all these adverse event reports onto our global safety database. This ensures that everyone is aware of the adverse events and we can then report them onto the relevant regulatory authorities. The pharmaceutical industry is regularly inspected and this is to ensure that the systems that we use to collect the safety information are up to date and fit for purpose. These days, it is very common practice for pharmaceutical companies to work in close partnership with the NHS. Liz Richards from Estella's is now going to describe why this is important and how this can benefit the patients. Like our NHS colleagues, here at Estella's we're really passionate about ensuring that patients receive the very best treatments available. Prior to joining Estellas, I used to work as a commissioning manager and my job was to make sure that local patients received the very best treatments with the use of limited resources. Companies such as Estellas were valuable to us because it meant that we were able to share best practice that was available from across the country. Now, after I've joined Estellas, it means that I'm able to be able to share those practices in the way that other companies did for me. An example of that could be the development of care pathways where we bring together clinicians, patients and commissioning managers to ensure that local services meet the needs of local patients. It remains a real privilege to work with people within the NHS. One doctor who has recently left the NHS to join Estella's Pharma is Dr Clive Selwyn. After many years working in the NHS, predominantly in anaesthesia um, and for various professional reasons uh, I decided to leave NHS practice and come and work in industry. Um, I found that uh, industry probably better suited some of my uh, communication and my sort of personal skills and I thought they would be a better fit in industry. My first position in industry was as a therapy area advisor for anaesthesia, uh, which I started in 2008. Uh, I now work for Estellas Pharma as a therapy area advisor for anti-infectives. Now, doctors are employed in industry because of their uh, clinical expertise, but also because they have a, a duty of care to their patients. And doctors in industry still retain their registration to work as a doctor in the UK. And this is very important. Uh, patients are at the heart of everything that, the, that we do in industry. And as a result, it's very important for individual doctors who work in each different therapy area to be responsible for potentially the patients that are going to take the drugs that the pharmaceutical company produces. My experience in intensive care many years ago provides valuable insights for my team. And this means that any mistakes that we make could have a profound effect on the patients taking our drugs. This provides uh, a feeling of intense responsibility for the doctors who work in industry. We have responsibility to uh, the company we work for, to the clinicians that prescribe our drugs, and to patients who eventually take them. Each disease has a separate doctor working for it. Um, as I mentioned, I work for anti-infectives, we have other doctors in dermatology franchise, urology, in pain and in other areas too. Now each doctor is responsible for this particular area within the company. Our work influences many aspects of healthcare and represents society's best hope for the development of new medicines and innovations in healthcare 
to improve future society and improve healthcare. We as an organisation um, are absolutely committed to make sure that we can help develop the medicines and help the clinicians uh, provide patients with a future that they can look forward to. So our current uh, development programmes and research programmes uh, are around understanding the needs of uh, patients with uh, therapeutic problems and our future development programmes are going to be focused on uh, understanding these therapy problems and developing effective medicines so that we as an organisation can focus on developing medicines that are useful for patients and clinicians and provide them with a real solution going forward. And our challenge going forward in, as an organisation is to explore more and more of these areas where there are huge unmet needs for patients and then to go and uh, work together as teams, together with our clinicians, to define what does success look like for the treating these patients and developing solutions for some of the medicines and the services that we may need to develop in the future to provide a better future for patients all over the world with some significant therapy problems.